On Wednesday, October 21, 2009, Caribbean Petroleum Corporation, or CAPECO, began a routine transfer of more than 10 million gallons of unleaded gasoline from a tanker vessel docked two and a half miles from the facility. The only storage tank that was large enough to hold a full shipment of gasoline was already in use. As a result, Capeco planned to distribute the gasoline among four smaller storage tanks. This operation would take more than 24 hours to complete. During transfer operations, one Capeco operator was stationed at the dock, while another monitored valves controlling gasoline delivery at the terminal. By noon the next day, October 22nd, two of the tanks were filled with gasoline. The operators then diverted the gasoline into two other tanks, tanks 409 and 411. Capeco used a simple mechanical device consisting of a float and automatic measuring tape to determine the liquid level inside the tanks. An electronic transmitter card sent the liquid level measurements to the control room. But the transmitter card on tank 409 was out of service, so operators were required to manually record the tank level readings once every hour. At 10 p.m. the night of the 22nd, as tank 411 reached maximum capacity, operators fully opened the valve to tank 409. At that time, an operator read the level of tank 409 from the side gauge and reported it to his supervisor. The supervisor estimated that tank 409 would be full at 1 a.m. But shortly before midnight, tank 409 started to overflow. Gasoline sprayed from the vents, forming a vapor cloud and a pool of liquid in the tank's containment dike. The CSB determined that a total of nearly 200,000 gallons of gasoline, the equivalent of 20 full tanker trucks, was released from the six vents on the tank. On a warm, windless night, the gasoline vapor cloud grew to cover an area of 107 acres. At midnight, the tank farm operator was ready to perform the hourly check of tank 409. But before reaching the tank, he noticed a strong odor of gasoline. He alerted the dock operator to shut off the flow of gasoline to the tank. The tank farm operator and another operator met the supervisor at the edge of the terminal. There, they observed a white fog rising approximately three feet above the ground. The supervisor sent one operator to the security gate to stop anyone from entering the site. Then the supervisor and the tank farm operator drove to an elevated point away from the cloud to try to identify the source of the leak. Meanwhile, the pooled gasoline flowed through open valves in the containment dike toward the wastewater treatment area. There, the vapor reached electrical equipment, which ignited the cloud. A flash fire raced back toward the storage tanks. Seven seconds later, there was a massive explosion, registering 2.9 on the Richter scale. The time was 12.23, approximately 26 minutes after the overflow began. Soon, 17 of the facility's storage tanks were engulfed in flames. Fortunately, the three Capeco employees escaped the tank farm, and there were no fatalities. Flames from the explosion could be seen from as far as eight miles away. The shock wave damaged approximately 300 nearby homes and businesses. Fires continued to burn for over two days. 